Today, we're having a look at good old PragerU. And you know what? I don't think I've ever covered them before. I know, I was as shocked as you. But anyway, before I start, I have to assure you all that I don't hate philosophers or philosophy. I just don't like pretentious windbags. So when I talk about philosophers being a bunch of worthless, lazy, work-shy dibdabs, that's who I'm talking about. And unless that describes you and or your favourite philosophy boy, please, please do calm down. They are just jokes. Mostly. Is it rational to believe in God? Oh, definitely not. The guy's just been such a disappointment. All he had to do was make a planet for his pet humans to live on, but then he goes and makes 70% of it impossible to live on, and filled the remaining 30% with wasps and spiders, making the whole place effectively uninhabitable. That's like building someone a house on a foundation of quicksand, and replacing all the doors, including the bathrooms, with frickin' beaded curtains, aka hell. Many people think that faith and reason are opposites, that belief in God and tough-minded logical reasoning are like oil and water. I mean, it depends on the context, but if I go to my doctor, Dr. Buzzard MD, and he can either diagnose what currently ails me by reasoning out what's wrong with me, or by faithing out what's wrong with me, I'll be honest, I'm gonna go with the reasoning 100% of the time. But while faith and reason aren't necessarily opposites, only one can ever lead to the other. You could technically reason into faith, but you can't faith into reason, because that doesn't make any goddamn sense. So one is objectively more useful than the other. They are wrong. Belief in God is far more rational than atheism. Oh wow, you just totally lost any semblance of intellectual honesty right there, Mr. Peter Kreeft, Professor of Philosophy, which, let's be honest, that's more of a professor of not being a grown-up now, isn't it? The famous joke being, ask a philosopher to get a job, and all they'll say is why. Don't get me wrong, I think philosophy itself is interesting, but if it's all that you ever do, well, why? There's more to life than pontificating on existence. Like whiskey. Logic can show that there is a god. Y yes but there's lots of different types of logic. That doesn't make it correct. And even if you use capital letters LOGIC, you can totally be logically correct and still be factually incorrect. Logic is useful, but it's not the be-all and end-all, especially when you have evidence. Evidence is king, baby, and logic can pound dirt after that, no matter how good it sounds. If you look at the universe with common sense and an open mind, you'll find that it's full of God's fingerprints. First off, common sense makes people believe all sorts of stupid shit all the time. Flat earthers, for instance, use common sense to see that the earth is flat. But if you use more than just common sense, shockingly, there's way more to it. A problem that I personally have is that people argue that common sense isn't all that common, and I completely disagree. I think, in fact, it's way too common, at least in its application. There's lots and lots of true things that aren't common sense, because they simply couldn't be. Second, opening your mind is completely meaningless. All I hear when someone says that is, no, don't actually open your mind, just believe the clearly stupid shit that I'm saying to you without thinking about it for even a second. Intellectual honesty is way more important than open-mindedness. And lastly, God put his dirty finger marks all over the universe. <sighs> I have kids, and it takes long enough to clean their greasy paw prints off of a window. Now we gotta clean up entire bloody planets? Wash your frickin' hands, God! Dirty bastard. A good place to start is with an argument by Thomas Aquinas, the great 13th century philosopher and theologian. Ah, 700 year old ideas. They always end up being the most up to date and factually accurate concepts ever, and never ever end up being a bunch of outdated or debunked horseshit. No. Also, his name sounds like equine, so, you know, horseshit is apt and funny. The argument starts with the not very startling observation that things move. They do? Um, I'm a thing, and I try my damnedest to never move. Moving is for those stupid people with them real jobs and responsibilities. I am working up to just having whiskey and fried chicken perpetually dumped into my face so that I never ever have to move again. I'll be living the dream. 
But nothing moves for no reason. Something must cause that movement. No, that's not true. I have seen Mrs. Sick cross a 10 meter gap in a tenth of a femtosecond from seeing absolutely nothing in the corner of her eye, as she thought that nothing was a spider. Honestly, if we could use her fear of spiders to generate energy, I don't think we would ever run out of electricity. But apparently, strapping her into a giant hamster wheel and dangling a spider from a string behind her would be cruel. It's like she doesn't even want to solve the world's energy crisis. <sighs> Look, fair compromise. Just spend all day in there so I don't have to pay to power my computer. Sounds good? Well, it does to me, so we're doing it. And whatever caused that must be caused by something else, and so on. But this causal chain cannot go backwards forever. It must have a beginning. Hey, you're a philosopher, so you're gonna love this one. Why? Why can't it go back forever? Or why couldn't it just be a loop? Or all sorts of other why crap? I mean, if you're perfectly happy to go, because God, well, I can make up shit too. Like the universe is just a big pile of dog vomit being perpetually barfed up and eaten forever and ever. It's just really slow from our perspective. Hey, it may be ridiculous, but the universe being made from puke would explain so much. There must be an unmoved mover to begin all the motion in the universe. There must be must there. Must. It couldn't be that it does just stretch out infinitely, that a hypothetical universe starter itself couldn't be part of a much larger universe. And how exactly do you know this? You say using logic and reason, but I say unmoved mover or prime mover or Mr. First Boy is the end of logic. And that's not to say the conclusion, but the removal of logic from your thought process so you no longer have to actually think about things. It's pretty convenient to be fair. A first domino to start the whole chain moving, since mere matter never moves itself. That's a friggin' terrible analogy, as dominoes literally have a thing that sets them off. And that thing is my sheer force of handsome. But that does come from whiskey. And whiskey, well, that stuff is clearly just magically created out of happiness and good vibes. And since those don't exist, hey, maybe you're right. A modern objection to this argument is that... Is that you're full of shit and should get a real job? Sorry, my philosopher bias is showing. No, the modern objection is that you are full of shit and should get a real job. God damn it! It's almost like I'm trying to say something. But what that could be is just impossible to discern. Some movements in quantum mechanics, radioactive decay for example, have no discernible cause. Okay, interesting if true. And from what we can infer, that there is actually a nuclear radiation pixie that zooms around the planet at multiple magnitudes faster than the speed of light, constantly knocking particles about to allow for that to happen. See, that's what it sounds like when someone says that the universe was done by God. How about instead of just making shit up, we carry on doing the science, okay? Okay. But hang on a second. Just because scientists don't see a cause doesn't mean there isn't one. Oh my God, did you just... Did he just debunk himself? For f sake! I thought an old dude with a smooth, dulcet tone would at least be above doing that. But clearly I was wrong. Like, mate, if they don't know yet what causes the decay of radioactive atoms, then why couldn't they just not know yet what came before our current universe? And I say our current one on purpose because... What's to say that this shit isn't just cyclical? And before you start with, well, the physics of the universe say, yeah, but that's the physics of our universe. It's entirely possible that we are contained within another space that has totally different rules to our own. In fact, one of those rules would be to allow for the creation and sustained existence of other universes. You know, it's ideas like that that really make the whole God concept extremely quaint and more than a little bit limited. All powerful my ass. It just means science hasn't found it yet. Maybe someday they will. But then there will have to be a new cause to explain that one. See, this is yet another reason why your prime mover argument falls down. And also shows how closed-minded you are. I want you, for a moment, to think of your unmoved mover before the beginning of the universe. And then just take one step back. Make the universe itself the unmoved mover. The thing is... That has almost the exact same likelihood of the universe being created by some god character. Apart from one simple fact. 
we know that the universe is real, whilst having zero evidence for God, making it both slightly and infinitely more likely to have happened that way. And I'm not saying that it did, but just showing the sheer lack of thought put into arguments like this. And so on and so on. But science will never find the first cause. Says you, assuming there is one, how could you possibly know that? Oh, that's right, you couldn't. That sheer arrogance talking right there from a man who doesn't even know how not to debunk his own arguments. That aren't even his in the first place and were already 700 years old at least and already debunked all about 699 years ago. That's no knock on science. It simply means that a first cause lies outside the realm of science. That's the most accurate thing you have said so far. Yes, your first cause lives way outside the realms of science in this little place we call shit that never happened land. Lots of stuff lives there. Hell, stuff that is now established science once did too because the ideas were tested and then held up to scrutiny. The fact is, everything has the capability to be science, it's just normally when it doesn't hold up to scrutiny we go, oh, well that's not true then. But for some reason, when your stuff doesn't hold up to scientific scrutiny, suddenly it's, well, God doesn't fit in a test tube. Yeah, along with everything else that doesn't exist. Dumbass. Another way to explain this argument is that everything that begins must have a cause. Translation. I have literally nothing else, so I'm just going to repeat myself like the doddering old fool I am. Christ, I am being mean today. I think I'm just pissed that this guy gets to be a professor when they won't even let me call myself an ultra mega hyper doctor from super space. It's a fair title, I think. But no. Bloody nepotism. Nothing can come from nothing. Prove it. Prove it. Stop making definitive claims and actually prove what you are saying. Oh, that's right, you can't. You aren't a scientist. But a philosopherizer. The scientific equivalent to, well, me and a scientist. Except I'm funny, so at least I bring value to the world, unlike you. So if there's no first cause, there can't be second causes. Or anything at all. Again, that could literally be the universe, because if God can make himself, then so can a universe, seeing as it's just as huge and mysterious as any made-up God boy. But for some reason, one of us isn't smart enough to understand that. Old age is a hell of a drug. In other words, if there's no creator, there can't be a universe. Except no, because you are still clearly talking about an interventionist god, and even if there was something creating the universe, there's still no reason to believe that anything that happened after that split second was in any way, shape or form guided or destined or intentional or anything. Or even that said god was aware of having done a universe for that matter. I mean, I start a new ecosystem every time I have hard gas but I don't really pay attention to it. But what if the universe were infinitely old, you might ask? It'd be almost as old as you! Zing! Well, all scientists today agree that the universe is not infinitely old, that it had a beginning in the Big Bang. Ugh, first you say that scientists don't know everything, and now when it's convenient, their opinions on things that we don't actually know for fact are just rock solid. And when people talk about the universe being infinite, they don't mean the one that we are currently in, that is however many billions of years old, but like existence. The concept that something exists beyond our universe but without, and I can't stress this enough, the need for that thing to be an all-powerful deity. Just a different layer. Like an ogre. I mean onion. Damn you Shrek, you've betrayed me for the last time. If the universe had a beginning, then it didn't have to exist. And things which don't have to exist must have a cause. Oh no, there are so many things that don't have to exist that have absolutely no rational cause. This video for one. Or that packaging that all cheap electronics come in. Blister packs. They definitely formed from nothing in order to really piss me off and cut my hands when I lose my patience with them. Which is basically straight away. There's confirmation of this argument from Big Bang cosmology. We now know that all matter, that is the whole universe, came into existence some 13.7 billion years ago, and it's been expanding and cooling ever since. 
Not sure how that proves that the universe didn't have to exist. In fact, it's entirely possible that the universe does have to exist. That it simply couldn't not have happened. But this is, as with everything in this video, purely hypothetical. The only difference is, you're smugly asserting all your positions as irrefutable facts, and I'm not. What do they say? You can always tell someone's correct by how often they say they are. No, wait. No scientist doubts that anymore. Even though, before it was scientifically proved, atheists called it creationism in disguise. Oh look, it's one of those things that used to live in shit that never happened land until they did some freaking science and came up with some actual evidence. And I had a quick check and yup, God created the universe is still in there. Along with politicians having souls and Sersic being good at the sex. Wait, what the fuck? Before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six's channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-